What if I told you that anyone can scuba dive? Whether you can swim, can't swim, or don't want to swim, but how about if you can't even walk? I can't walk, but now I dive all the time, so life has been good. There's an estimated 3 million certified scuba divers in the U.S. That's less than 1% of the U.S. population, and less than 1% of them get into the water like this. It's called adaptive scuba diving, and there's one South Florida group on a mission to make it available to everyone. Meet the Therapeutic Scuba Institute. When looking at Adaptive Scuba or the Therapeutic Scuba Institute, there's one man that you have to talk to. Yeah, scuba diving is good stuff. This is Michael Kaufman, the founder and president of the Therapeutic Scuba Institute, or TSI, an organization that helps people adaptive scuba dive. But what is adaptive diving? Well, it's, it's just scuba diving, but it's for people with disabilities. When you scuba dive, you have to know about approximately 20 different basic scuba skills, clearing your mask, clearing your regulator, assembling your equipment. And so if someone has a disability, what we do is we teach them how they can do those skills with certain modifications or adaptations, and hopefully they can do it independently. If they can't, then we have support divers to assist them in executing those skills. Rosemary Chiotti is a member of TSI and an adaptive diver herself. The adaptive part for me is that the, I use hand paddles. Since Rosemary can't fully use her legs like other divers, these custom designed hand paddles help her move through the water and keep up with traditional divers. Crews and a dive buddy also have to help Rosemary perform other tasks like getting on the boat and into the water. Just look at how she dives in versus a traditional diver. While traditional divers are usually diving for fun, some adaptive divers are jumping in for the health benefits. The thing with adaptive scuba is there's almost no domain of health I can think of where it isn't probably having a positive effect. This is David McMillan, a board member on TSI who's also a clinical researcher at University of Miami's medical campus specializing in mobility and rehab. We hear many anecdotes. The most common anecdote? Floating underwater relieves chronic pain. Being out of my chair, being in the water for like two hours today is the best relief my body can get from the pressures of just sitting in my chair and, 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 and being in this position every hour in, hour out, day in, day out. But divers aren't only citing physical benefits. Many of us have found that with clinical depression, there's hardly a better antidote. Since my disability 30 years ago, I uh, have struggled with some clinical depression, pretty, pretty dark places. And I was going through a, a particularly bad place. And I get to the point where I start thinking, there's no reason to go on. At her lowest point, Rosemary came down to Southern Florida for a dive trip and she would come back up, changed forever. And when I was about 60 feet or so, all of a sudden I felt in my brain a little hiccup and that was it. That was the last time I had a significant clinical depression and my friends and family say, so the next time that happens, we know what to do, go diving. I think there's a lot of potential for what Rosemary described, which is uh, this would be a high intensity, low dose, single exposure that has a lasting effect. Some scientists theorize that breathing nitrogen when diving helps the body release more serotonin, a natural chemical associated with reducing anxiety and depression. Tanya Santiago Perez is a PhD candidate and board member of TSI. 
She's doing her doctoral dissertation on how adaptive scuba affects a disabled person's health. This study is important because we're putting that anecdotal evidence into a rigorous research study that is actually testing what type of experience scuba diving is for them. This is going to be a pioneer study and hopefully it can trickle down to more people getting interested in researching it because what we need is more evidence to see um, what's happening uh, with people with physical disabilities when they scuba dive. So to help facilitate future research, TSI is trying to bring pre-existing adaptive scuba programs together. The adaptive scuba community is a fragmented, random thing where you have all these small organizations all having their own little special dive programs. To try and centralize the community, TSI is creating things like this registry. It's a database of adaptive divers, dive buddies, and instructors, helping researchers find participants for future studies and adaptive divers find the resources they need to get in the water. I think when it comes to collaboration in the adaptive dive community, it's a model where cooperation is mandatory. It's already just so rare, and we're trying to do something so unique. We know we could accomplish something together that we can't really by ourselves. And members of the dive community are rallying behind TSI's message. It's a very strong collaboration. It takes a village, right? It takes a village to help out and, and do stuff. So, you know, each of us have our own visions, but we're trying to work together with, with our visions and where they, they coexist, how we can move forward to help others. Hopefully we can get more people, more adaptive divers in the water uh, because of programs like Rosemary's. But TSI's training goes deeper than just getting divers below the surface. Not only do we get people with disabilities scuba diving and enjoying all the benefits of that, but then we get them into ocean conservation programs. Yeah, scuba's like accidental recruitment for environmentalists. In Florida Keys, we've lost over 85% of all corals. And the projection is in another 50 years, they're going to be extinct. Everyone's talking about marine ecology and about environmentalism. There's a lot of times that people with disabilities are excluded from conversations about sustainability. Here with Adaptive Scuba, everyone's gaining that identity of being someone who ought to and can make an influence here. TSI is hoping that between these conservation efforts and their push for research on Adaptive Scuba, that they can make a difference on a national level. Scuba diving is good for everybody. It's therapeutic. It treats the mind, body, and soul. The favorite part is when they come up from a dive and they just, you know, they have one huge illuminating smile and it radiates. Oh, it's a beautiful dive. The visibility is like forever. They go from that amazing you know, first dive, um, you know, their mind is just blown type of experience to then the identity of being a scuba diver. That could be a catalyst to changing a person's life. Just by knowing, gee, I can do this, what else can I do? They have naturally preconceived ideas about people who are permanently in wheelchairs. To see us roll off the back of the boat and go diving, just blows those stereotypes away. <laughs>